Oh, 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 oh. Final whistle has just gone at Croke Park and we have witnessed a proper nervy affair in this first Champions Cup semi-final. Hello amateurs, welcome back to the channel. Going to be here with you throughout the end of the domestic season and beyond. So hit subscribe down below to make sure you don't miss out on any future episodes. Now then, this, everybody was hoping for a classic. Two free-flowing teams that play loads of rugby. That was what we're hoping for. That is not what we got. This was a nervy affair right from the start, especially on the Northampton side. So many errors, like just basic handling errors. Some of them forced by some really quick Leinster line speed, but Northampton making error on error on error, and it was a slow start to the game. This, of course, led to a lot of scrums, and that was probably the most interesting part of the first half for me. It was a really good battle, and actually, the Looseheads did have the upper hand with Andrew Porter repeatedly knocking Trevor Davison back on the hit and then getting advantage there. It went either way. Northampton did get a couple of scrums, but Leinster with the upper hand overall, I would say. First uh, score went to Leinster, though, after plenty of driving play at the line. Uh, they eventually got a tap penalty, and it was slow. Like The ball was on the goal line. Gibson Park had to go and get it, come back to the mark. And in all that time, James Ram was absolutely sleeping because Gibson Park tapped it still had time to throw a pretty gutsy pass over the top for Lowe to score. 7-0 after 12 minutes, and let, uh, Northampton had done nothing in the game up to this point. Four minutes later, it's 12-0 uh, after Caelan Doris was held up over the line and just fought so hard, recognised the situation he was in, that it might well be a goal line dropout if he didn't get the ball back. Ball popped out. Jameson Gibson Pass slapped it to James Lowe for 12 mil after 16 minutes. And again, Northampton had done nothing at this point of the game. Saints have been really, really passive with their line speed as well, just allowing Leinster time to run onto the ball. However, they were putting in some huge, huge hits, uh, particularly from Curtis Langdon, who absolutely stood up and had a cracking game for Saints today. Uh, and as I said earlier, this was in comparison to Leinster's line speed, which was rapid and put in Saints under a huge amount of pressure. They got a scrum pen. I mentioned the scrum battle earlier. 29 minutes, they got a scrum pen for 15-0. And this really felt like that was a big lead to come back from. Even with Saints being able to play free flow and rugby, they were just nowhere near it. The following kickoff, they then got done for in front of the kickoff, which almost never happens. Uh, I mean, they were technically correct, but referees normally give a bit of a warning and then, you know, penalise the second or third one. Uh, so, again, just, just awful from Northampton, not getting in the game, knock-on after knock-on after knock-on. And at this point, Leinster had had some good moments, but this was far from a classic performance from them either. They weren't really hitting their flow, they weren't really getting through mountains of phase play. So, really game on. It wasn't until, like, the 35th minute before Northampton really got into their flow and they created a chance for James Ram but he was either overran the pass or the pass was a bit behind him I think he was probably a bit too flat to be honest however they got a penalty 15-3 at half time and I thought um, actually so that was the 39th minute and I thought there was a chance to run down the clock so they could kick the penalty half time it turns out they, they didn't they kicked off again in North, and uh, Leinster had huge amounts of phase play Saints got away with it they managed to get the ball back and get it off for 15-3 half-time. And these are one of the ones, right? You're in the sheds at half-time, and I'm sure the Saints coaches will be saying, well, we can't possibly play as badly as that again in the second half. It's 15-3. You know, we're still in this game, really. Like, if we can just get some stuff going, we can just get into the game, there's a chance. That's what the chat would have been, for sure. Um, but it came out second half, and... Leinster actually got through a few phases, but there was again, it was a poor pass, which led to Baird cutting all the way back inside and looking like an absolute galloping gazelle, as he does at least once in every game, flying through the middle. A couple of people, you know, providing turnstiles for him to go through, but amazing athletic break from Baird, exactly what he's known for. Then Leinster went through some phases and they got another try, and it was down to two or three really quality offloads, people staying on their feet, the support coming round, and then uh, low over in the corner. First ever, apparently, uh, hat-trick in a Champions Cup semi-final. At that point, I wrote down in my notes, game over. I just thought, 
there's no way back from that now. You know, Saints would have just wanted to come out after half time and just slowly build back into the game, hopefully get the next score, even if it was only three. Uh, it seemed to me that that was dead, game dead and buried. Saints, to their credit, battled on and on. It was a bit ugly. It was a bit, you know, people were missing lineups on both sides. Uh, there were scrum penalties again. Uh, but then the game changed in the 55th minute when Augustus uh, did a brilliant kick chase regathered the ball, chipped down the line and managed to keep it in incredibly, which led to a line out for uh, Northampton five metres out. Augustus, by the way, he was also outstanding for, uh, for Northampton all day long. The line out was lost, as was typical of this game. You get into a good position and then lose it. However, Saints managed to hold Leinster up over the line. They got a scrum penalty. Oh, sorry, the scrum penalty was against Davidson. Uh, and again, another chance lost. But 59 minutes, a Leinster loose line out. Augustus, again, grabbed it. Beautiful feet from Dean Wall. And second row Moon threw a loopy pass over the top for Hendy to chip through and score. And at 2010, with 20 minutes to go, this was now officially game on. But what happened then is very typical, again, in these types of games, at the hour mark, if it's very close, people are, become all about territory. So it was box kick, lots of box kicking at this stage of the game. Le Leinster forced the penalty, but Byrne missed it. And at this point, he was two out of five off the tee. And that could have been a pretty big reason why Northampton were really in this game still. Uh, one of them anyway. Northampton kept battling, kept battling away. It just seemed like every time they got a chance, they would knock it on or Leinster would force an error or they'd stuff up a line out or... Uh, Finn Smith actually missed the penalty kick to touch as well. All these things, all going against Northampton, or you know, uh, Northampton creating these problems for themselves. But they got field position from a Freeman chip and chase, uh, which Jameson Gibson Park had to uh, touch down over the line or carry over, I should say. The whole front row had been changed by this point, and Miller Mills beat Kean Healy. Kean Healy making his 111th Champions Cup uh, performance, a new record. Uh, but Miller Mills got the upper hand, scrum penalty, and it led to Seabrook going over in the corner for 2017. Officially game on, nerves are plenty, and Saints did the right thing. They uh, tried to get into territory. Ter you have to get the territory first. You can't just go all out, I don't think. So, so there was still six minutes to go. They tried that. Leinster got the ball back, however, and then it was nip and tuck to and fro. Saints looked like they might go and score, but Leinster turn it over and then manage to see the game out after a fiercely contested ruck at the end for a 2017 win and another final for Leinster. Congratulations. I think you deserved it thoroughly overall and the scoreline probably, well, no, not probably, definitely didn't reflect the dominance that Leinster had in this game. I mean, they'll probably feel like, not that they got away with one, but it was definitely closer than it should have been. What do you think? What do you think about that Leinster performance? Do you think Saints will be kicking themselves that they turned up or you know, didn't turn up at the semi-final for the whole of that first 60 minutes, or most of it anyway? Uh, it's a tough one to take when you're a player and you know you haven't put your best game on the pitch. You know, maybe, uh, I, like I said, I don't think Leinster were really, really on it today. They had moments, but they weren't in full flow. Will Northampton really be kicking themselves that there's potentially a chance then for the, to get a real famous victory? Tough one, absolutely tough one. And, well, it was definitely not a classic, but my word, this rose into a phenomenal crescendo at the end of this game. And, yeah, proper nervous, edge-of-the-seat stuff, which is what you want. You want competition, you want it to be tight, and this is what we got in this game. Well done, both teams. Uh, but what do you think at home? Anything I missed that you think was really vitally important to this game that really made a difference? Uh, what do you think about that Leinster performance? You know, what do you think about Saints? Uh, any other players that I didn't pick out that you thought had a really key role? Let me know in the comments down below and we'll join you there for a conversation. Give this video a thumbs up while you're down there if you don't mind. And you can subscribe there. You can watch that one next. And do not forget to get out and play.